Let's look at how we name ionic compounds. We'll begin with the binary compounds, the simplest. These are made of just two kinds of elements. In my example here, we have some calcium atoms and some bromine atoms that have combined. When naming this compound, you simply name the positive ion first. Now remember, the positive ions have the same name as the elements. So this ion is called calcium. We follow this by naming the negative ion second. Recall that monatomic anions, negative ions that are made of a single atom, they've had their name changed from an I-N-E ending to an I-D-E ending. So bromine has become bromide. Thus, this compound is named calcium bromide. If we had combined calcium with oxygen, we would call that calcium oxide. IDE ending. The next kind of compounds are those that contain polyatomic ions. Recall that we memorize the names of about a dozen of these, and this is one of the reasons why, so that we can name these compounds. If you don't remember the names of the polyatomic ions, you should look them up in your textbook or on the back of your periodic table. The rules for naming these are the same. We're going to name the cation first, in this case, it's called magnesium. And then we're going to follow that with the name of the anion. This anion is called nitrate. So the compound would be magnesium nitrate. Let's practice a few of these. When I read the formula, you say the name. The first one, KF. Yes, that's potassium fluoride. The next one, Al2O3. Right, aluminum oxide. The next one, MgSO4. What is the name of that ionic compound? This one is magnesium sulfate. Here we see one of those polyatomic ions that we were learning. SO4 is the symbol for the sulfate ion. Finally, let's try the LiC2H3O2 compound. What is the name of that compound? And that is lithium acetate. Again, we see one of those polyatomic ions. The last type of compound is a little bit more challenging, so let's look closely at this one. The reason this is challenging is the lead ion in this comes in two different flavors. There's two different charges that this lead can have. Chemists say lead has two different oxidation states. Sometimes we have the lead 2 plus ion, while there's another ion that is a 4 plus ion. So we need to be careful when we name this. The name of this particular cation is lead 2. The name of the anion again is chloride. Notice that we've changed the ending to IDE. So the compound is called lead 2 chloride. Now how did I know this was lead 2 and not lead 4? Well, I looked carefully at the formula and I noticed there are two of these chloride ions represented. That's the significance of this little subscript 2. I also recall an important rule about ionic compounds and that is the overall charge on all of the ions when you put them together must be zero. So with that knowledge I realized this lead must have the 2 plus charge which would cancel out the two negative one charges on the negative ions. Let's name some of these ionic compounds. The first one is made of copper and bromine. What's the name of the copper bromine compound represented here? Now if you said copper bromide, you're partly right. There are two kinds of copper ions. There's a copper 1 ion and a copper 2 ion. And you need to specify which one this is. So the correct name of this is copper 2 bromide. How did I know it was copper 2? Well, I figured if there's two of these bromide ions, and I know each bromide is a minus one charge, I figured that out from my periodic table, then the copper must be a two plus ion so that all the charges cancel. Let's try the next one.
It is nickel carbonate, but we want to specify which nickel ion this is. This one is nickel 2 carbonate. How did I know this? Well, recall from your memorizing of these ions that carbonate is a 2 minus ion. If you didn't know that, then you looked it up to make sure that you were getting these charges right. There is only one carbonate ion represented here and one nickel ion. Therefore, their charges have to be the same so that they cancel out. Thus, nickel is a nickel 2 charge. Let's try the next one. This is iron 3 hydroxide. Recall that the hydroxide ion is a 1 minus ion. There are three of these hydroxide ions. I know that because the notation here tells me that. If there are three 1 minus ions, that means that the iron ion must be a 3 plus charge. And now let's look at the last one. Pb, SO4 in parentheses with a 2. We're going to name this compound lead 4 sulfate. Now I bet some of you called this lead 2 sulfate. You probably saw a 2 here and figured this must be the lead 2 ion since it's with 2 sulfates. Let me show you how this one works. The two sulfate ions each have a charge of 2 minus. This tells me that the total negative charge is 4 minus, so I figured that the lead ion must have a charge of 4 plus, and so I called it lead 4 sulfate. As you can see, naming ionic compounds is not real complicated. I hope this short lesson helps you as you're completing your assignments.